Hey everybody, welcome back. We are on Unit 2, Economic Indicators and the Business Cycle. We are on Subunit 2.3, Unemployment, and this is Part 1. In Part 1, we're going to be looking at two measurements. One is the unemployment rate, the other one is the labor force participation rate. And guys, we want to see how these measurements are indicators of the health of the labor market, because that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to give us indications about the health of the labor market. All right, let's start off with the unemployment rate. When it comes to the unemployment rate, the first thing we want to know is how is it measured? Well, here's what we do. It's, it seems simple enough. We take the number of people who are unemployed over the labor force, okay? Number of people unemployed over the labor force. First thing I want you to know is the labor force is not the working age population. The labor force is actually a smaller subset of the working age population. Technically speaking, who makes up the labor force? It is the people that are employed, all right? People who are employed and the people unemployed, all right? And we're going to need to define these. The employed appears to be quite straightforward. If you have a job, you're employed. In fact, if you're working just one hour a week, you are employed. That's right. All you have to do is be working one hour a week or more. So one hour a week or more. However, there is an issue when it comes to the employed, and that is the underemployed. All right? Well, who are the underemployed? There are two types of underemployed persons. One is the one who is overqualified for the job that they're doing, and the other one is a worker who's working part-time and wants to work more. Now, why are these problems? Well, let's think about a recession. Let's think about just going into a recession. As we start going into a recession, well, as we start going into a recession, what do businesses often do? They don't lay off the workers right off the bat. They might start cutting hours, right? So when they cut hours, these people are still considered employed, but they're not working what they want to be able to work. This is a problem about our labor market, but it's not going to show up in our data at all because nothing's happening to their status. They are still just considered employed. So that's a bit of a problem. The other one is the overqualified. You can imagine as we get into a recession deeper and we do have layoffs, some people are going to take jobs for which they're overqualified. That's another problem when it comes to the health of our labor market, but again, it's not showing up in our data. It's not doing anything to the unemployment rate. So the underemployed is a bit of an issue because this thing doesn't give us any visibility to this. And if the number of people unemployed is underemployed is increasing, that is a problem about the health of the labor market, but we're just not going to get visibility with this measurement. Now, the bigger issues is on the unemployed side, okay? The unemployed, you know, no job, for sure. That, of course, goes along with it. But what else besides no job, all right? You've got to be working age population, working age. You've got to be what's called not, not institutionalized, all right? Not institutionalized. What that means is, of course, not in a prison, not, not in a prison, not in an asylum, but also you're supposed to be part of the civilian labor force, okay, which means non-military, so we're only going to count people in the civilian labor force. And then what I like to say is you have to want a job, you have to want a job, and you have to be, you know, able, able body to be able to do it, right? So you have to be able to work. But that is still not enough, okay? There's one more big criteria. You have to be actively seeking. You have to be actively seeking. And this is a big issue, guys, because there are definitely people that are the top five, but not the bottom one, okay? So let's talk about the person who's the top five, but not the bottom one. We go into a recession, somebody gets laid off, and they begin looking for a job. The first month, they put out a bunch of applications, they don't hear anything. Second month, put out a bunch of applications, don't hear anything. Third month, put out a few less applications, don't hear anything. Fourth month, they still put, fourth month, they still put out a few applications, don't hear anything. Fifth month rolls around, they have not heard anything or been rejected a ton of times. They stop looking. Now, in that fifth month, they have no job, they're working age, they're not institutionalized, they want to work, they're able to work, but in that fifth month, they stop actively seeking. And if they stop actively seeking, they are no longer unemployed, and guess what? The unemployment rate goes down. That's right. 
And when they drop off of this, when they become what is called discouraged, okay? So somebody who is the top five, but not this bottom one, is known as a discouraged worker. When they become discouraged, they are no longer unemployed, and the unemployment rate actually ticks down. So it looks like the labor market is better. But guys, that's not the case. As people become discouraged, that's a really bad sign about the health of the labor market. And so this is definitely a big issue when it comes to the unemployment rate. Probably the one ec economics teachers want you to know the most is that discouraged workers, people who are these top five but not actively seeking, are not part of the labor force at all. And, and when you go from being unemployed to being discouraged, the unemployment rate actually drops down, making it look like the economy is doing better. And by the way, guys, it works on the opposite side of a recession too. So we've got on the recession side, then dropping out and the unemployment rate going down. Then you get to this side, and what happens is people start looking again. And when they start looking again, they go from being discouraged to being unemployed. And guess what? That's actually kind of a good thing, right? That's kind of a, hey, people are now got optimism about the labor force. They're stopped being discouraged. They're now re-entering the labor force, actively seeking again. And the unemployment rate goes up, okay, because of that. So we want to keep our eye on this big issue. So when it comes to the unemployment rate, two big issues. The unemployed, we want to understand them. They are employed, okay, and that's all they are. They're seen as employed. And the discouraged worker, hey, discouraged workers, not unemployed, and that's a bit of an issue. Again, to be unemployed, you must be the entire list. So, a lot of economists say, look at the unemployment rate, but you need to also look at the labor force participation rate. If you look at this with this, you'll get a much fuller picture, okay? This one is going to help you like really take care of the issue of the discouraged worker. What is the labor force participation rate, okay? This is the number of people in the labor force over the working age population. Working age population. So in this one, we do get an indication when somebody becomes discouraged, again, they drop out of the labor force when you become discouraged. And so when that happens, this thing does tick down and we can say, oh, okay, look, the unemployment rate, maybe like we're heading into a recession and all of a sudden we have this weird month where the unemployment rate actually kind of ticks back down or maybe it doesn't change much. We're like, hey, I know there was more layoffs. Why didn't it change much? Or why did it, why didn't it, why did it not change much? Or why did it tick down? And we're like, oh, maybe there's a lot of discouraged workers. We look over here and the labor force participation rate is dipping down. We're like, ah, that's what it was. See the labor force participation rate? It was 66%. Now it's 64%. I, that must indicate that a lot of people have gone from being unemployed to being discouraged. So that's the labor force participation rate. Again, if we couple this with the unemployment rate, we will have a much better indicator of the health of the labor market. Just looking at this one alone, has some issues. Anyhow, hope that made sense to you. We'll see you in the next video.